Hello, everybody. I'm Paola Santana, and I am uh, the co-founder and head of regulatory um, strategy in Modernet. And I'm going to try to talk to you about what we're trying to do in Modernet as a way of unpuzzling a new model of innovation. So let me ask a question really quickly. How many of you consider yourselves innovators in whatever you're doing? Exactly. So you already know that innovation doesn't only come like traditionally from big scientists, uh, kids in garages or labs. We know that innovation comes wherever there is intent observation and trying to solve a problem to understand its intricacies and try to bring a different solution. And it's not only for big universities and big schools. And this is what we are learning in Modernet. We're learning that complexity in innovation has a very nice way to show us a really nice opportunity to learn and to create. To create a different kind of infrastructure, a different kind of organization and culture, a different kind of development technology to engage community in what we're doing, and even to have a small startup influencing regulation in a developing country, which is pretty much difficult to think. But let me tell you a little bit about what is Modernet and what's the problem we're trying to solve. So in the world, there's 1.4 billion people living in extreme poverty. And from these 1.4 billion people, 1 billion people have no access to all season roads. This means these people is disconnected from the social and economic exchange in the world. They cannot get their goods to market, they cannot get consumer goods, and they cannot get medicines when they have emergencies. And it's estimated that it will take them 50 years to catch up in ground infrastructure and trillions of dollars, which they don't have. So let's check at the other extreme. There is more than 3.5 billion people living in cities and megacities, 21 billion liters in wasted fuel, fuel, and 67 billion in lost productivity is the cost of congestion just in the US. So we ask, is there something we can do? Can we create a different alternative way of infrastructure that leapfrog road infrastructure? And we think we can do it. How? So we have a fleet of electric flying vehicles that can go autonomously from one landing station to another. The landing stations can swap batteries and the packets automatically. And all the system is being managed by a routing software and artificial intelligence system that controls all the packages that are being uh, transported from one place to another. And even though our unmanned aerial vehicles can only uh, carry two kilograms now, over 10 kilometers, they are part of a bigger network that can span complete cities, complete countries, and even complete continents. And this is what we call the modern net. So um, what's the cost and why we think this is a breakthrough in transportation? The cost to move two kilograms of matter from one place to another, 10 kilometers apart, is 24 cents of dollar. And when we figured this out, we thought, this is a big thing. And this can transform the way people have access to stuff. So how you actually build this system is a very big vision. Everybody loves it, but how you do it. So number one, we try to figure out where is the need and how to usually use it. We figure out that in Lesotho, there are 500,000 people living with HIV, AIDS, and 70% of them live in rural areas. And what happens? They cannot get their treatment, and they have to do blood tests twice a year. So what happens is that you would need to have um, transportation of blood tests from labs to clinics and results back with meds. 
It's been estimated by the World Bank that to build one um, two-kilometer road, two-kilometer one-lane road, you need one million dollars. And we said, can we do better? So we figured out that with one million dollars, we can connect the whole district of Macero, 138 square kilometers. We can connect 47 clinics with six labs using 50 stations and 150 UAVs for less than that. So this is the power of this technology that we're talking about. But how to do it? Again, I work with an incredible team of people, UAV hackers, social entrepreneurs. I have one of my co-founders here, Darlene Dam. Um, uh, visionaries, mechanical engineers, me, myself, I'm a lawyer, an entrepreneur, I work in solving, trying to solve complex systems between um, legal frameworks, developing countries, political systems, and technology, when they usually don't merge, I try to merge them. So number two is actually doing it. So if you guys could play the video. Last year we say, let's just do it. So we went to Dominican Republic and Haiti to do our first field trials. This is one of our prototypes, flying over Petionville camp in Port-au-Prince, delivering drugs. And it was quite amazing. We met with government officers, um, local community leaders, um, social entrepreneurs, all of these to try to understand how this would work. Number three is thinking local and global. So this experience in Haiti, especially in Haiti, because it's very difficult to make something happen there, taught us that you need to start small. You need to understand how this will work in a small way, how you can set up a bottom-up system, engaging the community not only to operate it, but you know to embrace it, to care for this thing. And then giving more thorough thought on how to go from something very small to something very big. Imagine, for instance, how you can turn something that goes from point to point to become a new mode of, tra of transportation. How can you replace my millennia old concept like roads that is flexible, hard to build, hard to maintain into something that is ultra flexible, almost no infrastructure at all, that goes with human flow, human movement, dynamic, and autonomous logistic distribution network. It's something that blows your mind, but you have to start very small. Then you need to know your challenges. We have a lot of challenges, and we're working around them. Um, because nobody has set up a drones network before, for good. So. What we're trying to do is, you know, build um, reliable, uh, safe, secure, good technology. This is number one thing we're trying to do. Number two is that we're trying to start small. So, for example, here in the U.S., the Federal Aviation Authority has, was mandated by Congress to integrate all these small and big UAVs into the national airspace by 2015, starting with the small category that is below 55 pounds. We're working with drones that will be below 12 pounds. So this is another important thing. Third is also understanding how to uh, fund this thing. What is the business behind this thing? So we need to come up with a model of revenue that allow us to fund the vision in the way we conceive it and also to create this new economic platform that will allow many people to be integrated into the economics of the world, just like mobile telephony did. Then there are other important challenges as public perception, competition, and ethics. We need to understand that in this industry, collaboration is key. If not, the industry is never going to take off. So we need to come up put together all the drones for good guys, and set a group of rules so we all understand that uh, we need to uh, follow them, you know, respect privacy of the people, um, behave ourselves with 
high levels of integrity, and at the same time, tackle important issues as public perception. And the last of the challenges that I will touch very briefly is legal and regulation, basically because um, there is a very important point here on making people understand what we're talking about. So one of the things I learned when working in the Dominican Republic Constitutional Court is that big problems come when you have two fundamental rights at stake and you have these rights, you know, you have the court that needs to decide not which right is more important than the other, but which right has an overall positive impact that can um, counteract the negative impact. And this happens with drones, you know. For instance, we pay a lot of money and we have to go through stringent security dogs smelling our luggage in airports or screen check-ins. But at the end, you have a system that if an officer checks your luggage without asking you, then you can file a claim against this officer. It doesn't always work this way, but this is the way we have to talk about drones. You know, it's not only arbitrarily saying no drones or yes drones, but engaging in a conversation that allows us to talk about this new ecosystem that we have to uh, figure out. Companies um, building good tech, uh, an, an economic incentive for insurance companies to jump in as well, and also community being engaged and trying to operate this uh, system. Finally, uh, the two key things we're trying to do, number one, Fifth is getting the right partners with us, people that understand what we're trying to do and that can support us. Um, and we're working with an international development bank that can help us develop a public-private partnership to set up the first modernet network in 2013. Then we're also talking with a big social entrepreneurship organization that can help us to set up a social franchise model to make local operators and micro-entrepreneurs to operate, to operate this technology in these developing countries that we want to operate. And at the same time, for us to train them and to do technology transfer. And we're, we're also working with governments and regulators to enact law that allows this new um, market to emerge. So, we are working with them so they can use Modernet as a use case to um, allow certification for other companies as well. So we can develop our vision and other companies can do the same. We know Modernet is an improbable story, but this is the last thing we always do. We embrace it. We remember every day that in the same way that we're trying to connect the dots on developing countries, developed world, high tech, no money, no infrastructure. We need to connect the dots um, for modernet. And it's, you know, back to why we're doing it, how you connect the dots in your own life. Like, I, I'm a lawyer and I was working in DC and now I'm living in California and I was out of NASA. So how you connect all these dots, it's very difficult, but you just have to do it. And modernet started as flying cars for the developing world. And everybody was amazed by this idea. How can you do that? Now we are doing two kilograms, still for the developing world, and these guys were amazed in Haiti. So the question here is, can we develop technology that does more than amaze these guys? Can we do more than fancy technology? Can we position developing countries at the forefront of the next paradigm shift in transportation. And where are the visionaries and the entrepreneurs that will make this happen, that will, you know, say, we cannot leave these billion people one century behind anymore. So it's about, for, for us, using the world as our lab, using the stories of people that want to deploy modernet in the world and listen how they did it. And rethinking innovation, not as a linear process, but as something that can empower us of, uh, you know, having the opportunity to impact the lives of billion people and having the responsibility of doing it with high levels of integrity. 
and with a different set of values. Um, putting purpose over profit and wealth distribution over wealth um, accumulation and social good over private um, interest. So this is my take for you to think about when will we be able to finally um, make tech to do something else than amaze us and to make it work in the places where it needs the most and when will it finally make developing countries develop their own technology because they need it very badly. And if you think that now is the moment because we have the tools to do it, then this is exactly what we're trying to explore at Matternet. So I thank you very much for your attention.